Kathy Freston is here. Her books and writing focus on healthy living and conscious eating. Her new book touts the physical, spiritual, and environmental benefits of a plant-based diet. It is called Veganist. Lose weight, get healthy, change the world. I am pleased to have Kathy Freston, my friend at this table. Welcome. Thank you, Charlie. So what is it your husband said? He said that you were ve veganists. What did he say? Yes, I, you know, I was Tom giving Freston him... The Yes. One, one day I was going off on one of my spiels about why it's healthy to eat vegan. And he said, honey, you're the veganist. Yes, that's true. And I thought, well, okay, that makes sense. It's been someone who's, you know, obsessed with a violin and wants to learn more as a violinist. And I'm sort of obsessed with all things vegan. So right. I'm so, a veganist. So what does that mean? You're a veganist. It means that I eat uh, a plant-based diet. And I do it not only for health reasons, because you lose weight, you prevent and reverse the major diseases like cancer, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, um, but you are also doing the single best thing for the environment. Mm -hmm. You're also doing uh, something that's positive for the animals because the way most animals are raised these days are on factory farms, which is a, a horrendous practice. So eating vegan sort of um, addresses all of those issues. Uh, it, it benefits me as an individual, my health, it benefits the environment, it certainly benefits the animals, and it's, it's sort of a grand slam way of eating. And it started for you how? It started for me. One day I was looking at my dog, who I love so much, and uh, it occurred to me that this dog is no different than a little calf or a pig or a chicken is just that I know my dog and I don't know the other animals and because I was writing on evolving as a human being and pushing myself to be ever more conscious I realized that the one area I wasn't conscious at all was food around food and because food is so fundamental you know we eat three times a day so we're making choices three times a day what we believe in what we stand for and I realized that I didn't do that at all with food and so I started thinking that if I'm not going to be a hypocrite I ought to start looking into how food is produced and when I saw how it was produced it did not sit right with me meat particularly meat dairy mm, cattle eggs. drawn taken to slaughter exactly and it didn't sit right with me um, but because I'm from the south I grew up eating meat and you know dairy and barbecued ribs and <laughs> every eat, kind of cheese they eat meat in Atlanta hello <laughs> lots of it three times a day and it was so um, hard for me to think about not eating this stuff yeah. so what I did was I just pointed myself in the direction and I said I want to be someone who doesn't eat anything from so an did animal. you take nice little steps forward That's or did exactly you exactly what I did so what did you do I leaned into That's it. That's what Tom said you leaned into. I leaned into it so I started reducing my animal protein I started swapping out one meat dished meal per week and put, you know making a plant-based meal instead and one meal per week. One so that's meal seven per times week. three is twenty one. So twenty would be normal, one would be. Exactly. Basically doing meatless on Mondays. Right. And by doing that, I started seeing how easy it was. And I started looking into the health repercussions. And within one week of not eating meat or dairy, um, your weight starts to come off. Within two weeks, your blood pressure and your blood sugar are dropping. Within the third week of eating a plant-based diet, your cholesterol drops significantly. So that was so empowering when I learned that, that the effects of eating this way, of um, saying no to animal protein and opting for plant protein were so huge and satisfying and gratifying on every level for me that I just continued to lean ever more in this direction. It's one thing to do it for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to want to proselytize and get everybody mm -mm. else to do it. I'm not into proselytizing at all. Not my business to tell anyone how they should eat. I wouldn't have liked... But what's this about, though? It's about information. Yeah. So in the book, I give you 10 promises, and it's... And it's, it's done in the way of promises because I think it's so exciting. You get to lose weight. You get to prevent, not only prevent, but reverse uh, major diseases, for instance, heart disease. Um, I talk with Caldwell Esselstyn in the book, who is uh, from the Cleveland Clinic, and he's just a rock star heart surgeon. And he says that heart disease is basically a paper tiger that need not ever, ever 
exist, and if it does it ex if it does exist, it need not ever progress. So he has taught me how to reverse heart disease with a diet, and the same with cancer. I talked with T. But Colin heart disease, Campbell. you mean things like hardening of the arteries and yes, yes. Yeah. And and how do you reverse it? By moving to a plant-based diet, so giving up. Uh, now I, usually I talk about reducing, but if you have serious heart problems, you opt for plant-based protein, uh, beans, legumes, chickpeas, lentils, whole grains like brown rice, vegetables, fruits, tofu, seitan, all of those things, high protein meat alternatives like veggie sausage and things like that. And when you do that, your cholesterol drops so significantly, so quickly, that it, it's very exciting that, mm -hmm. that you can actually reverse the trend of heart disease. It's, it, and it's a, it's a slam dunk. And, I mean, this and, is, and not get diabetes, type 2 diabetes type two and all diabetes, those things. Type 2 diabetes, you can be off your medication within a week. So what's the hardest thing for people to do in crossing the bridge? Well, I think it's um, learning to uh, to know that, first of all, we don't need as much protein as we think we need. Americans eat about twice as much protein as, as we should have. But don't the Japanese, for example, isn't there a lot of protein in their diet, which is heavily fish? Their protein, before they've been more westernized, has always been um, soy protein. So that's plant protein. And rice-based. It's been a rice-based culture. And you didn't have... Not fish. Not so much fish. You think. A little bit of fish, yeah. yeah. You didn't have heart disease. You didn't have right. cancer. Um, Until they came here and started eating like we do. Exactly. Exactly. Until they've been westernized. But people are willing to change if they think that the change not only will benefit them, mm -hmm. but is not painful. I didn't want pain either. I wanted to enjoy good food. I still do, Charlie. I want to go out to great restaurants and I want to have my martini and a yeah. glass of wine. All right. Yeah, I want to enjoy my life. You just and want to eat plants. I just want to eat. I don't want to eat animals. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I don't want to eat animals. I don't want to eat animals. So what do you eat? So I'll go to Japanese food and right. I'll have a bowl, you know, the rice and the vegetables and the tofu and the right. edamame. I'll go to an Indian restaurant and I'll opt for lentils, you know, dal and, uh, you know, a rice and uh, all kinds of delicious breads, Italian, I'll have white beans and, yeah. and pasta, yeah. Pasta's okay. Pasta's fine. What's the little. evidence that this is an idea that has traction? Oh my gosh, it's a, uh, because the health repercussions are so good and people are spending so much on their health care, if you think about it, you know, no matter how great your insurance is, you still have a copay, you still have lost wages when right. you're out sick. Um, you, you see Bill Clinton yes. is now vegan. Bill, is vegan or vegan-ish? Bill Clinton is vegan. Is, are you serious? And yes. you know this from fact? He's facts? talked about it. Well, he looks good. I mean, he looks great. He, looks, he lost you know, a, a ton lot of weight. Right. Of weight. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and what does he say? That he's happy? That it has changed his life? That he feels, seen, he had a heart issue, as you yes, know. Yes. He's he's seen the science, and it's so compelling that he could not ignore it. And he said he wanted to be around for his grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And right before Chelsea got married, he decided he would become vegan. And so, he looked like it when he went to the wedding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mike Tyson is vegan. Is that right? Mike Tyson is vegan. Larry Page from uh, Google right. is um, the uh, vegan. CEO now of Google. Uh, Biz Stone from Twitter, co-founder of Twitter, is vegan. So these these are uh, these are people who really do their research. Yeah, these are serious They're people. They're not not driven by necessarily an ethical thing, but, right. but they're looking at the science. And it is so compelling that you see people, Steve Wynn from Las Vegas, the yes. mogul in Las Vegas, he's vegan now. Yes. And all 22, and just, got all just got married, and all 22 of his restaurants in the Wynn Resort are uh, have a vegan menu. So this is so a sign of the, the times. So therefore, what would be your goal, you? Well, to, to go to restaurants and see uh, like half the items be plant-based right, would right, be wonderful. Right. To see in schools that kids have uh, vegan menu items available to them. They really don't eat well in schools right now. I'd love to see that change. I'd love to see... The uh, First Lady's on that case, I think. Yeah, get, get moving, eat more vegetables. I mean, it's hard for a government official to come out and say, reduce your animal protein because... Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many companies and yeah, corporations a, yeah, that are right. arguing otherwise. So, and, and you, what have you become? I think it was Gandhi who said, compassion is a muscle that gets stronger with use. And so this is a way for me to practice being compassionate and aware and conscious, you know, is to change the way that I eat. And from that, I think my choices 
in in how to interact with people, how to see the world, how to um, how to do anything is affected by the way I eat because I'm I'm conscious, I'm thoughtful, I'm compassionate, and so I want to continue making decisions in in that way. Will you write another book? I'd love to. <laughs> uh, this is what Bono said. Kathy Preston writes so beautifully and convincingly that even the most carnivorous of rock stars finds himself staring at his bleeding protein with new eyes. Mario Batali, who's a chef and an entrepreneur, while we can't expect everyone to go vegetarian or vegan entirely, read Kathy Preston's new book and be surprised how simply and amply you can benefit from just changing a few things in your daily intake. This is powerful stuff with long legs into our shared future. So if you read this book, mm -hmm. you will know what? You will know what to opt for. You'll know how to make things for your family that they'll enjoy. You will know how to transform your health in a very short amount of time. In terms of serious diseases, you will know how to be an environmental steward because eating vegan food is the single best thing we can do for the environment. The Environmental Defense Fund said that if every American ate vegan for one day a week for a year, it would be like taking eight million cars off the road. So wow. that's more powerful than changing our light bulbs or buying a hybrid car. It's, it's something that we can do, and I think that's very exciting that we can actually make a difference in our own lives and, and, and you know, the greater, the greater good, that we can really be effective that way. Veganists, lose weight, get healthy, change the world. There you go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Pleasure to have you. Thank you so much.